So in this uh, lecture, in this video, I'm going to talk about the last part of vectors, part five of vectors, which includes bases and orthonormal vectors. Before we define the vectors and how we illustrate them, we talked about vector addition and scalar vector multiplication, transpose operator and inner product, norm and distance, specifically the Euclidean norm, the angle between two vectors, which is something that we discussed in the previous lecture, and the linear dependence and independence among vectors. All right, the basis. A set of n linearly independent n dimensional vectors is called the basis. So, for example, for the two dimensional space, one basis is zero, one. Let's call this E2, E1, one, zero. All right. So, there are uh, two linearly independent vectors in the 2D space. So a basis is also a set of vectors that can generate all other vectors in that space. So I would call this an intuitive definition of basis. So here we have E sub one and E sub two in the two dimensional space. Let's see if we can create any other uh, arbitrary vector in the two-dimensional space using these two bases. So let's call vector A to be 0.5 and minus 8. So the question is whether I can create A as a linear combination of E sub 1 and E sub 2. And the answer is yes. If you choose beta 1 to be 0.5 and choose beta 2 to be minus 8, then we can see that A can be created as a linear combination of the basis, the given basis. Another example is the basis for the three-dimensional space. So E sub one is one zero zero, E sub two is zero one zero, and E sub three is zero zero one. Again, this one is a basis for the three-dimensional space. All right. What does that mean? All vectors in the three-dimensional space can be created from this space. And something I want to point out here is the basis for a space is not necessarily unique. Let's look at an example. This A, B, C, these three vectors are three linearly independent vectors and they count as a basis for the three-dimensional space. All right. The next topic is orthonormal vectors. In order to understand orthonormal vectors, we are going to focus on these two categories. First, the definition of orthonormal vectors. The definition of orthogonal vectors. And also the definition of normalized vectors. And then we will see some examples of orthonormal vectors. All right. Uh, first of all, as I said, we go over the definition of orthogonal. Two vectors are called orthogonal if their inner product is equal to zero. If you want to talk geometrically, it means they are perpendicular. Also, a vector is considered to be normalized if the norm of that vector or its length is equal to one. We can simply normalize the vector by dividing each of its components by its norm. Let's take a look at an example. Vector A is equal to three and four. So I want to normalize vector A. What I do first, I find the Euclidean norm of vector A, which is three S squared plus four S squared, the square root of this, nine plus 16, a square root of 25, 5. Then the normalized uh, version of vector A is A divided by norm of A, which is 3 divided by 5, 4 divided by 5. All right. Now, if we want to find the norm of this vector, it's going to be 
normal 0 0.6, 0 0.8, the square root of 36, 64, or a square root of one, which is one. So this is a normalized vector. All right. Now we go to our main definition, orthonormal. If two vectors have length of one, which means they are normalized and they are orthogonal, then we call them orthonormal. So uh, this is the conclusion here. Every set of linearly independent vectors whose Euclidean norm are one are orthonormal and form an orthonormal basis for that n-dimensional space. An example, E sub one is one zero zero, E sub two is zero one zero, E sub three is zero zero one. So these vectors are orthonormal and they form an orthonormal basis for the three dimensional space. This is applicable for higher dimensions as well. Let's call, let's go to the generic case in dimensional space. So an orthonormal basis for this space is E sub one is equal to the first element one, the other element zero. E sub two, the first element zero, second element one, all of others zero. And E sub k, let's call it zero, zero, one here in the middle, zero, zero. This is the case element. And finally, E sub n, all zero except the last component. So this shape and uh, orthonormal basis for the n-dimensional space. But as we talked about it before, the basis for n-dimensional space is not unique. There are multiple bases. And again, if you want to show the orthogonal vector geometrically, the two vectors are perpendicular. So this is vector x is vector y. And if they are orthogonal and norm of x is one, and norm of y is also one, then we call them orthonormal. So this was the last uh, part of vectors. We talked about basis for a space. We mentioned that basis is not necessarily unique. There could be multiple bases for a given space. Then we talked about orthogonal and orthonormal vectors.